Hi, this little um, video is or screencast is more about um, how you get the most out of watching this screencast. So hopefully you're, this is actually one of the first ones you're actually watching. So it's all about the Cornell note taking system and um, this was invented by some dude um, who used to work at Cornell University because he had some results, really bad results. This is quite a few years ago. We're talking, you know, 40 or 50 years ago or more and um, invented this system so his students could get the most out of the lectures. So same deal. We need you to get the most out of these screencasts. So before you start, before you start watching a screencast, you really need to take turn off your phone turn off the iPod or any other listening device, go somewhere quiet and get off Facebook. You need all those distractions out of the way because you've got to remember this is basically like being in a, in a classroom, okay? And you wouldn't have those, hopefully, you won't have those distractions when you're actually in a classroom. So what you'll actually need, you need a book or paper or something to record onto, a pen, or if you're recording onto your laptop or something, go for it. You can use that as well. And you need an attitude and a willingness to learn. Because without those things, it's not going to. If you, it's not going to just happen and magically go into you. You actually have to do something with the information that you're being presented. So when you're watching the screencast, the first time, the best way to do it is watch, um, watch it all the way through without stopping. Now most of the screencasts are between five and not any of them at this stage are in longer than 15 minutes and I wouldn't go longer than that anyway. So you give yourself a bit of time to do this. Second time through, take notes, pause, rewind, replay the bits you want to go over. The, it's, um, the power is in your hands to do what you need to do. So you need to also think about how do you actually learn. So your learning style, do you learn by actually writing? Do you learn by watching? Do you learn by doing? Do you learn by listening? So it doesn't really matter how you get the information. The only way you will retain it is when you have to recall it. So the only way you know you've learned something is when you actually have to go and remember it. Because if you can't remember it, that means you haven't learned it. So this is what it should look like. So you need to have some sort of um, thing on your page. And I just realized I left something at two and a half inches. Anyway, because this is an American thing and I pinched bits and pieces and added bits and pieces in to make this more my own. Okay, so you can see down one side, if I put my little thingy, this is your recall column. Okay, so you want a, a margin of about five centimeters. And this um, column reduces ideas after the lesson into a few words. Okay, so you don't actually put anything in there at this stage. But this is your record column. So you want that the widest part of your page. And the re you need to record the lesson as fully as possible. Okay, and then, whoops, sorry. This bit down here is your reduced column. So you need to be able to reduce the main points out of, of this page um, and your lecture notes. Some people call it a summary column. Okay, so that's um, down the bottom you might want to do some sort of summary. And when the, look, the sizes and um, the centimetres and bits and pieces really don't matter too much. It's just that you need to have your page divided up so that you've got a smaller column, a much wider column, and this little bit down the bottom as a summary. Okay, so once you have your page all drawn up, you need to be able to start to record. So you're lucky if you're watching a screencast, you can actually pause bits and pieces so that you can actually um, get the bits you need. So record during the lesson. So during your lesson or the screencast, write as many facts as you can. Use shorthand to get the full idea. So in other words, start thinking of ways you can abbreviate and leave spaces between ideas so you can fill in more later. So it's better to have um, much more space in between all your ideas than to actually have um, it all bunched together and then no room to put bits and pieces back in. Step three, you need to reduce. So after the lesson, after you've actually taken all your notes, as soon after the lesson as possible, summarize these ideas and facts in as few words as possible in the reduced column. So that reduced column is that small one on the side, okay, of your page, which means that you need to, um, that's where you might start to put a few, um, like a, a short phrase or um, a term or something so that you've got an idea of what is on the in the bigger column, okay? And you need to show, um, this helps you show relationships between points and strengthens your memory and it prepares you for exams gradually and ahead of time. Believe it or not, this system really does work. Step four, recall. Recalling what you wrote in your notes, write questions in the recall column of your notes to quiz yourself on the material. So write your questions as close as possible to the beginning of the section in your notes. You are quizzing yourself on and write a question for each new idea presented in your notes. Now the question could be simply, say for example you've recorded um, a bit on um, pitch and um, the question, your question might be, what is pitch? 
and then you've got to come back and be able to answer that okay um so even just simple questions like what is is a way that you can actually use it to recall the other thing is if you're not sure of something put a make a big question and come and ask your teacher okay Recall is, we're still continuing with the recall part. The questions you write in the recall column will become your best method for checking what you have learned. Because if you haven't, can't actually remember it um, and have to refer back to your notes, that means you haven't learned it. So you need those recall bits and being able to do that is what um, lets you know if you actually know your stuff. Then you need to be able to go on to step five, which is recite. So recite from the record column. In other words, cover the record column, which is your big, the big wider one, and using only the words in the record column, say over the facts as full as you can in your own words. So you might, you've covered over one bit, you look at the words and it might say, I'll use pitch as an example, again, and the word, you've only got written in your um, re record column the word pitch. And then you should be able to go, Okay, in the um, pitch means the height or depth of sound. In a question for pitch, I need to be able to morph melody, ornamentation, range register, roll, um, phrasing and harmony. And that's something you should know and be able to recall. So if you can't, when you're doing this recite part, you need to go back over your notes. Then, after you're done, uncover your notes and check that you've said um, what it is against the facts. This will help you to transfer your ideas to long-term memory. And that's the, basically all it is. If you can't do it, um, get it into long-term memory this is a way to do it you might have to do it a few times some of us are a little bit slower than others um, but it'll eventually help you in help you get there step six is reflect so reflect on possible test questions and mark unclear points so go back over your notes and um, have a look at what you what you don't actually understand um, think about ways that the, this information will be used in a test so for you guys, you simply just have to go to a um, the websites and look at the actual tests um, that are online and look at the questions and go, well, yeah, could I actually answer that or can't I answer that? And that goes for any of your exams. This is not just for music. Please use this all in all your bits and pieces. So this helps in making sense of your notes by finding relationships and order in the material. Try to put your ideas in categories and tie old material to the new. So in other words, the way you can... Um, really help yourself is to make connections between what you do what you already know and what you have learned and how you will actually use those bits and pieces think about which points will appear on tests and highlight any unclear points so you can ask questions about them before the next lecture or lesson or screencast or whatever it is that you actually um, are doing please 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 anything you don't understand make sure you ask so that you can get some clarification because believe me your teachers are more than willing to help you Okay, step seven, review. Review to improve your memory. If you spend 10 minutes every week, just that's just a little minimum, or so in a quick review of these old notes, you will retain most of what you have learned and you will relate the facts and ideas to present lectures or readings. Now just imagine, if you've done this for every subject, you've used this method, and you only use, have to spend 10 minutes reviewing each of those, okay each of those um, bits and pieces that's only one hour to keep you um, going one hour for all your subjects because you most of you are doing between five and six subjects so 10 minutes each that's one hour of review that will keep your mind fresh and all the bits and pieces you need in your brain and the more you do it the less stress there'll be when it actually comes down to actually exam time so here's some other little tips Try and keep a separate section of your notebook or binder for each course or have a different book. It's up to you how you do it, but please try and keep your notes separate. Don't put it all in the one book like a lot of kids try and do. You need to have notes for each lecture should begin on a new page. So each new um, lesson or screencast um, or concept that you're learning should be on a new page. Don't try and fill it uh, like um, save paper. You're better off to spread it out. Please date your lecture notes and number all the pages because there's nothing worse than if you've ripped it out of your book so that you could actually study and then they all get you know, messed up and dropped and all their bits and pieces and it's really hard to put them back in order. So um, date it and number all the pages. And never use a sentence in note taking when you can use a phrase or a phrase when you can use a word. The, bit, the idea about taking notes is to reduce things down into um, something that's easy to actually um, take down quickly. Some more little bits and pieces of tips. Use indentations to distinguish between major and minor points. So that means move it in your page a bit. Um, put most 
notes in your own words. However, however, the following should note, be noted exactly. So the best way for you to know things is when you've actually put it into your own words because then you know you fully understand it. But you should always make these exactly. Formulas should always be exactly the same. Definitions should always be the same. And specific facts. You can't put your own words um, for the dates of the, um, say, World War II. You can't make up any date for that because it has to be a specific date. Okay? So make sure that you use um, those sorts of things have to be exact. Everything else can be in your own words. Use abbreviations and symbols wherever possible. Um, you might want to make up your own little system because it doesn't matter. You're the only one that has to read this information. So you might want to make up your own system and, and um, have a page somewhere that's a bit of a reference guide for you. And note down any, un, any unfamiliar vocabulary and unclean areas. So in other words, if you're not sure of a word, you might want to highlight it or um, note it in, a, in another separate page or the back of that actual book of, um, of that particular subject so that you can come back and check on that. And if you should miss something completely, leave a blank space and get it later. Okay, so if it, things have gone too fast, leave a space and come back to it. You need to develop a code system of note marking to indicate questions, comments, important points, due dates of assignments, etc. So this is the best way for you. You have to make up your own. There are um, you know, lots of systems out there, but how you do that is up to you. It might be by colour, it might be by um, shape, it's up to you. Make sure you can understand what you have written and if needed, make corrections. There's no point taking a whole heap of notes if you can't read your own writing. So make sure that when you do, even though you want to do it quickly, make sure it's nice and um, neat. And clear up misunderstandings or feeling missing information by consulting the teacher, classmates, the text or additional readings. So if you can't understand something, go find someone who knows or look it up for yourself. Often you'll remember it more if you've actually taken the effort to go find the information out for yourself. That's the end. If you'd follow these steps, you'll find that this is actually um, a really good system to use, but it'll only work if you actually use it. It's not magically going to happen. Okay, so good luck with that. You try and use the system and I'll see you in class. Bye.